Welcome to DNM Consulting Firm Podcast Show. Today we'll discuss the Pelts Analysis concept to prove why it's a good idea to invest in South America, especially in Peru. But first, we need to understand what Pelts stands for and why we use this method to determine if it's a good idea to invest in Peru. Okay, so let's get started. The PELTS analysis is also known as pestle analysis. Many people use different names to describe this analysis tool. But the main concept remains constant. It explains ex external factors and help you think about uh, the impact these factors have in the industry. The effective analysis tool is what will be discussed in today's podcast. Okay, so the reason why this analysis tool is so important is that we can get a better understanding about the broader perspective of the environment in which you want to build a business in. By understanding these environments, we can actually determine what threats and what opportunities there is in the market industry. Another indicator that Pelt's analysis tool can be used for is to pick up current market trends, which can also help us to determine long-term planning of the company. Okay, so let's break down the Pelt's analysis. The P stands for political, which includes tax policy, tariff, uh, trade control regulations, deregulation, as well as government, um, what government does uh, Peru have? Is it a stable one? Uh, as well as other, is there any freedom of press, for example? What are the rules? Um, are there any consumer protective laws? The Peruvian government type is constitutional republic. The legal system they use is the civil law system. The president, Olanza Humala Tasso, is the chief of state as well as the head of government. The president serves a five-year term. In 2006, the United States and Peru trade promotion agreement called PTPA was signed. The PTPA agreement eliminated tariffs and removed trading barriers to the U.S. Now, as a result, it actually provided security that established predictable legal framework for investors to do business in Peru. So moving right along to the letter E, okay, E stands for economics. So how is the economy in Peru? Is it growing or is it at standstill? What is the business cycle like? And of course, you need to know um, are there, how are the projected economy, economy growth? What is the interest rate? That is prediction. What, uh, was the, what is the supply and demand? What impact is, does a country have on globalization? What is the labor force like? Is the cost of labor cheaper in Peru than elsewhere? And what is the country's GDP? In the last few years, Peru has made it much easier for the foreign investors to enter into the Peruvian marketplace. Some even questioning if Peru will be the new Brazil as the economy keeps on improving. Mineral resources and vast fishing grounds helps grow the economy at an average of 6.4% per year since the year 2002. The Peruvian economy is stable with a small appreciation in the exchange rate with low inflation. Now, due to the private investment, the economy grew almost 7% in 2011. The GDP real growth rate in Peru is an estimate of 6.9%, and the GDP per capita is $10,000 in 2011. Now, interestingly enough, the unemployment rate in Peru is 7.7% which is an estimate from last year, 2011, which is actually better than the current U.S. unemployment rate of 8.3%. Okay, so now we're on to letter L, and the letter L stands for legal. We need to know how legal laws are in Peru, how they affect our business. What are the local laws? What are legislatives? And what are the environmental regulations? And what about 
competitive regulations? Do the company even have a chance to compete in the marketplace? There have been some changes to Peru's environmental laws, especially the water law. The water law requires that human consumption is the first priority over other industries, such as mining. Other local laws to be mindful of are um, the local laws that protect the Amazon. These newer laws have put constraints on the mining industry. But the pressures from the outside world has elevated the Peruvian environmental standards to a new and a higher level. It is important to know these laws, especially if your company is going to be using any of Peru's natural resources, such as water. And we're moving right along to the letter T, and the T stands for technology. How is Peru's technology? Does it stand up to the U.S. standards or the global standards, as a matter of fact? Are they using old methods or do they have new methods of technology? How is Peru on technology licensing? What about patterns, innovations? Are in, in, uh, innovators protected under the law? How technology affect our industry? And do we need to invest more money in certain technologies that Peru does not offer? All these things are important when considering investing in Peru. Technology plays a great role in any industry to advance itself and create a more efficient businesses. Peru has some challenges in getting the latest technology due to its vast geographic landscapes of the desert, the Andes Mountains, and the Amazon. Plus, there are many undeveloped technology communities where investing is needed to run a profitable business. On a good note, there are laws in effect to protect innovation and Peru is a fairly easy market to enter into when compared to other similar economies. All right, so the last letter is S and it stands for sociological. We look at demographics such as race, family size, age, gender, hobbies, uh, what educational level are they, um, income level. What is the population growth rate? What religion do they practice? What management styles do they use? Do they have any ethical issues? How diverse are they? And what is the immigration rates? Um, other things to consider is social factors that help us to determine the trends and how we can advertise to the target market. Interestingly enough, Peru's race is about 45% are Mary Indians and 37% are Mestizos, which is mixed Mary Indians and whites. And there's about 15% whites and the rest 3% are Blacks, Japanese and Chinese and other descents. Spanish is spoken by 84% of the Peruvian population. Families are, are an important factor when making business decisions. Many Peruvian businesses have family members working with them. The Peruvians also like to make decisions based on the best outcome that accommodating to a group as a whole. In addition, religion also plays a role in their decision making. Peru's main religion is Roman Catholic, which is practiced by a whopping 81.3%. Peru do have about 54% of its people below the poverty line. There's a larger gap between the poor and the rich. The rich Peruvians earn about 40 times as much as the poor counterparts. There, here is where education plays the key to diminishing that gap. This concludes the full Peru Pelts Analysis podcast.